If you are watching this video, chances are that you are a student preparing for some exam or a young professional looking to get ahead in your career. And if you've clicked on this video, then you want to become a better student, be able to crack any exam and learn more efficiently. So that's what I'm going to talk about today. I'm Dr. Siddharth Warrior and welcome to my YouTube channel where we talk about neuroscience and everything. As a medical student, studying and giving exams is something that I know about. And I have managed to crack every entrance exam that I've attempted and I've had the honor of studying in the most prestigious medical universities in the country. So today I'm going to tell you how you can crack any exam and become a better student. Now this is a long video and initially I was thinking of dividing it into different parts but as a student I would have liked to see one detailed video on this topic so that's what I'm going to give you today. I hope you watch the whole thing to really benefit out of it. This video is divided into three sections which is mindset, knowledge and exams. So let's start with step one which is setting your mindset. Now I know that when you think of studying you immediately think of buying books, making notes and sitting to study but before that Setting your mindset is very, very important. And there are three things that you need to do to set your mindset right. Number one is acknowledge that this will be difficult. Just knowing that the path to success is not a straight line. There will be failures in the middle. There will be days where you are unable to focus and there'll be days where you think it's not going to happen. Those are not unexpected things. In fact, Consider those days, those low moments as part of the journey. Ye hone hi wala hai. You ask anyone, any student who has cracked an exam and they will tell you that there were days where they thought it's not going to happen. And as somebody who's cracked those exams, let me assure you that the path is not easy. It is going to be difficult. The sooner we accept it, the easier it is to build resilience. And resilience is key to making this journey successful. Step number two in building the right mindset is to build curiosity. Now curiosity is the best motivator of knowledge. Ask yourself, why are you studying this? Why are you trying to read this subject? What is it that is making you curious? Because if the only reason that you're attempting an exam is because you want to get a good rank or you want social validation, you want mom and dad to tell you that you're a good student, then that motivation is not going to last because there will be days when you are bored, you don't feel like studying. So that is why curiosity, which is under se jab wo feeling aata hai ki nahi mujhe seekhna hai, that feeling is the best motivation. So ask yourself this question, Suppose if there was no exam, would you still read about this topic? And if the answer is yes, then that means you're on the right track. And finally, for the right mindset, learn the importance of rest. Now, when you think about hard work and hustle culture, we are always thinking about, Acha, mujhe kaam karna hai, mujhe padna hai. but we never think about how it is important to sleep, eat on time and get exercise. Exercise not only allows your mind to rest, but it also improves your memory. If you want to learn more about how exercise affects your brain, you can watch this video of mine. And if you like the video so far, then consider subscribing to my channel. It acts as a motivation for me to keep creating high quality videos to help you live your life better. Now that you have your mindset in place, let's talk about the actual studying part. What does studying hard mean? How do you calculate that? Is it about the amount of time that you spend in front of a book or is it about the outcome of that study? So the ideal outcome of studying is knowledge. You need to know something that information is out there and you imbibe that knowledge so that now you can use it whenever you want to. Sunne mein to easy lagta hai, but there are some challenges of absorbing knowledge. So the first challenge is that there is a lot of information out there. So it can get overwhelming ki itna sab kuch mein kaise padu. Challenge number two is that our memory is not unlimited. We will read something, but then we will forget it. Challenge number three is that information is often given to us in a confusing way. It's not explained in a good way. So it makes it more difficult to understand that subject. And finally, challenge number four is that our environment can work against us. Many times we have distractions around us, things that take us away from our studies. And that makes things more difficult. So the difference between hard work and smart work is understanding these challenges and overcoming each challenge one by one. So how do you do that? Number one is to build a knowledge tree. Now visualize everything that you know as part of a giant tree that is connected with each other. 
because knowledge does not exist in isolation. Everything you know is eventually connected with everything else that there is to know, but you need to see that connection. So whenever you learn something new, try to connect it with the things that you already know so that you can see a bigger picture. For example, when I'm studying medicine and suppose I'm reading about the heart. Now I already know things about the brain. So when I read new things about the heart, I try to connect it with what I already know about the brain. And so I learn everything about the heart in context to what I already know. And after this, when I read about the lungs, I'll try to connect it with what I already know about the heart and the brain. And that is how your knowledge tree keeps growing. Now, how do you overcome the second challenge of having limited memory is by taking notes. You may have noticed that when you read something after a few weeks, you would have forgotten a lot of it. In fact, many times it has happened with me that I open a book thinking Mujhe ye chapter padna hai, and I find that I've already underlined it and I might have written some stuff around the page, but I have no recollection of when ye kab padha. So it's almost as if wo padh ke kuch hai nahi hua. there was no use of reading that. And this is one of the saddest parts of studying, which is the first reading is the most important and also the least important part. It is the least important because you will not learn much from that first reading, but it is the most important because you need to get it out of the way. It is the second reading that actually starts teaching you things. That's when you start forming patterns and that's why it's so important to revise. And the best way to revise is from your own notes. So taking notes is when you document everything that you read onto your own notebook. Just bringing it down in your own handwriting makes a big difference. And there's a difference between note taking and note making. After you've taken down notes, now you have to sit with them, form your own patterns, make your own conclusions and write things from your own experience. And that is how you make notes. Making notes is when you make that knowledge your own. Now it is something that you know. And that feeling of internal knowledge makes all the difference. Challenge number three was that knowledge is often given to us in a confusing way. And the solution for this is approaching the same knowledge from a different source. So for example, if I were to read about a complex topic like Alzheimer's disease, I will read it from one textbook. I might understand 10, 20% of it, but that is not the end of the story. I will read about the same topic from Wikipedia, from some journals, and from my seniors notes because each one of those sources will give a different perspective on the same topic. And that is how you get a better and bigger picture of the same thing. And finally, challenge number four is cleaning up your environment. You have to make everything in your environment conducive to your own study. So the way I think of it is swimming with the current. You try to make your environment work in your favor and suddenly all of the hard work becomes easier. So if you talk to the people who are interested in the same things you are, if the walls on your study room have reminders for you to do important things, if your table is free of any clutter that can distract you, all of these things help you get knowledge better. Now, a very important point here is competition. Now we tend to think that our friends who are studying for the same exam is our competition. So uh, we should not share much with them, but this is a very silly way of thinking. Your friends are not your competition. In fact, the more you work with them and the more you collaborate and study with them, the better both of your marks will be. So get over that sense of competing with your closest friends and learn to study together so that both of you can improve. And now for the third and final part of our video, now that we have worked on our mindset and learned how to get knowledge, let's talk specifically about the exam that you have to give. Now here is the tricky part because every exam needs a separate strategy. Whether you're preparing for NEET or JE or some international exam, the strategy with which you approach that paper is going to be different depending on whether it's a theory paper or if it's an MCQ paper or if there are negative marks and if so, how much negative marks, each of these things changes the way you approach that exam. So how do you come up with an exam strategy? There are two important things to do. 
Number one is to look at the last 10 to 15 years and to find out what all questions were asked in the previous papers. This is very important because a lot of questions get repeated and you will get to know the pattern with which they come up with the questions. Spotting that pattern and preparing accordingly makes all the difference. And the second step is to talk to seniors who have already cracked that exam. I'm a big believer in not reinventing the wheel when it's not necessary. And if you have seniors who have already done it, just speak with them, get their guidance, not so much on what to study as much as how to study. There will be specific tips that they will give you on how to prepare for that particular exam that can make your life so much easier and prevent you from having to learn those lessons the hard way. Some questions that you should definitely ask them are what are the hot topics? What are the patterns that they found in the questions? How much time should you give to each question? What is the strategy for leaving negative mark questions? And things that they wish they had done if they were starting to prepare all over again. These are very important questions and the answers will change the way you prepare for the exam. So that's it for today's video. I hope it helps you in your preparatory year. If you've been struggling with an exam and there are questions that you have for me, drop it in the comments below and I'll try to take as much as I can. All the best to all of you. If you like this video, hit the like button, share this video with your friends who are also preparing for exams and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers everyone, all the best.